Let's actually start with uh, and start in Tai Chi harmony. Allow your feet to touch. Push your head top up to its highest point. Relax your tailbone. Bring your hands together in the center. And then let your body adjust itself. When we talk about the Tai Chi ideas of the head top, the chin, relaxing the face, opening the, the interior parts and expanding the hollows, we do that as sort of a like an exercise going from one part to another. And just the same way the Tai Chi form doesn't have any breaks, we don't have to do those things in parts. That can be just one thing, expanding. So you shift your structure, your head top, your shoulders, your hips, your feet, all at one time. In the beginning, because we're learning what all of these, the, the feeling of this expanded shape, those are, that's the recipe. But we can cook, put all the pieces for the recipe together to cook instantaneously. We have microwave technology. So you put it in, and in 30 seconds, the body goes back to its regular shape. <clears throat> We're going to start with some breathing. That's a good way to start. But before we do that, practice something when you're in Tai Chi harmony. Make sure that your feet are connected and that the as if there's a plane on the top of the head and that's moving upwards. See if you can allow all of your tendons to expand on their own naturally without doing anything. Like something you can do inside your mind, you can allow your tendons and muscles to relax. You can start in different places, but feel as if your entire arm is getting longer in place, the elbows can be, become heavier. Same thing with the legs, as if just by using your mind, you can allow the tendons and muscles to relax and reach the expanded state. And then in the neck and the head top. How many here have ever taken a really difficult yoga class and then afterwards you feel so stretched out you can put your body back into that state without taking the heavy-duty yoga class. So practice while we're standing in Tai Chi Harmony. And then later, another time, you can practice when you think about it. So take a deep breath, relax. We're going to start with some Qigong because before you do anything, it's a good way to uh, make sure that you have energy to complete the task. So breathing. Inhale and make it a stretch. We're going to do some stretching this morning. So just like when you wake up in the morning, press your palms all the way to the sky. And then reach your fingertips all the way out to the sides. And at the base, just let everything relax. So when I'm inhaling up, if I was reaching towards the camera, I press my, my palms this way. <clears throat> so on the inhale, go at your own pace. And then exhale, reach out to the sides. So the same thing if earlier, just a minute ago, by practicing a static posture, Tai Chi Harmony, we can allow the tendons and muscles to relax just using our mind. Now we have something to go with it. We have a physical movement. So, and we're only doing one thing, breathing. We're either inhaling or exhaling. So it should be pretty easy to do the same. Use your mind to, uh, depending on how you look at it, either activate or deactivate the tendons and the muscles. Make sure your feet are connected to the ground. Breathe at your own pace. You should find as you can relax the tendons, even if it's distant in the bottom part of your calf, it's easier to breathe.
check to see that you have a very serious expression while you work. I'm actually not looking at anybody's camera, so <clears throat> don't take that personally. For a long time. Uh, I'm sure that Mark has heard me make that joke 50 million times as to why. So. And wherever you're at, do two more full breaths. Go at your own pace. Don't worry. Make it a stretch and take in all of the air that you can. <clears throat> and then when you finish, bring your feet together. Bring your hands together from the center. That's a teaching tip, actually, that I learned from Simone. If anyone here knows uh, Simone from Westwood, she would say, when you have the students doing something that takes a lot of repetitions, and uh, maybe you can sense that they're bored with it, give them a number. Say, do five more, do ten more, do three more, something along those lines when you want to uh, close. It's a good teaching tip. Unless, of course, uh, <clears throat> you have students and you, you're drilling them and you're just going to repeat and keep repeating uh, an exercise, in which case either tell them nothing and allow them to just go through it, and or my teacher would say, one more time. One more time. One more time. And people would say, but we did it one more time. And he would say, one more time. So breathing. With this one, feel that we're still doing the qigong to warm up. Instead of stretching vertically, I want you to twist your torso. So make a waist turn. And twist your forearm as well. Breathing, shifting over one side. And feel the same relaxation that we started with. As if you can use your mind to completely take the muscle and tendon tension out of the equation. How would it feel if you could sit back to relax and still have the structural power to do the thing? So make your breathing match the movement. And this one can be practiced soft. We can do this as a, as a qigong. And it may even look as if the movement that I'm doing is, is relaxed. It is relaxed, but there's power. So keep working. Uh, I see a few people. Uh, when you do this, we can just make it like, like seaweed under the ocean. And this is a good, you know, uh, maybe early in the morning, it's good to practice that where everything is just so soft. But if there's, we can have the same relaxation with a power. So try to have a little bit of something. Don't leave it completely relaxed. And we can also do this with, if you like, you can make a fist and engage your abs like you're pushing open one of those heavy steel fire doors that you find in a, a corridor of a concrete building, <clears throat> like you're using lots of power. Anywhere between 1% and 99% is Tai Chi. When you 50-50, that's close to what we're looking for. So, And it will change depending on the movement and the timing as well. Yes, yeah, so you can change by adding the cloud hands on the end of it if you like. But let's continue to stretch. Bring everything back to the center. And then the same thing when you return to the center. See if you can, how quickly you can return to the central equilibrium. So the head top going up, the feet rooted, shoulders relaxed, hips sinking. And then breathing. <clears throat> Take a deep breath. Let's, uh, let's stretch out the head and neck. Reach to the side and... 
like you're forming a plus sign. So the spine and the neck are the vertical part of the plus sign. Make that as, as long and tall as possible. So pushing up through the head top and letting the tailbone sink. And then the same thing with the elbows. They're the corners of the, the plus sign, the edges. And so pull those out to the side. And then you can do this on your own, by the way. So it's your own. If, I'm, if I take too long while I'm rambling on, change to the other side. Make the, the center line very straight, pushing up through the head top. Allow your chin to tuck. And then make the, the vertical and horizontal lines with the plus sign straight. So reach your elbows back and out to the sides. Line everything up. You can time it with the breathing, but you don't have to. <clears throat> we'll do one more on each side. Feel like you're reaching power to the fingertips. So as if you have a glove and you're reaching all the way through, tear through the ends where the thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. And feel the stretch go all the way up into your shoulder. Feel it go to the other fingertips. On your own, when you feel stretched, change. Breathe deep. And then come back to the center. Relax. Uh, let's turn the, turn the shoulders as much as you can. So you can practice slowly. Uh, it might look really, I've actually never thought about practicing this one really fast. I know I'm going to try it. It seems like it would look rather silly. If you, if you did these, these shoulder rolls really, really fast. <clears throat> Whatever, breathe. Change directions, Just going the other way. And then alternate. And this time, instead of keeping tension in the, in the chest and the upper back, see if, like we said earlier, if you can let everything completely relax. So when we're alternating, like pulling in the opposite directions. So pull one to the back while the other one is shooting forward. Try to keep your spine straight so the power is still going up. Imagine all that tension in your shoulders and your back is, like we said, some type of taffy or uh, some type of squashy stuff that we can stretch. So pull the shoulder all the way up, all the way back, and then assist it when it reaches the peak by timing your breathing to also reach the peak. There's two different ideas when stretching. Let's go back to the center. And we'll use to continue stretching the upper body. I'll face the corner. Is connecting the feet, relaxing the tailbone, and making the lower body as if it's in one place. And then turning around the center line. So make sure this turn doesn't affect your, your hips and your knees. Keep that locked. Just turn your spine. Keep your hands in line with the sternum. Don't cheat by sort of pulling this way uh, when you're warming up. <clears throat> Practice it. And then two things while we're doing this one. You can turn with the breathing. Is when you turn, see if you do it with an inhale and then exhale back to the center so that the, the body is fully inflated as it's being run. See how that feels in your tendons and your muscles. And you can practice a couple of those. We'll do one more on each side. So inflate as you turn. Come back to the center. And then try a different one. Once you get back to the center, take it a long, deep breath. And when you turn, exhale all the way. So you're wringing out all of the everything. When you turn and come back to the center, you should feel something different on each one. Right? <clears throat> when you get back to the center. 
How many feel some difference between the two? Inflating when you turn one way and deflating. I don't know why. Uh, this is something coming from uh, Qigong from Master Su. And in some of them, in the, the uh, Dao Yin exercises, we inflate when we're at the maximum stretch. And in the other ones, the, uh, the five animals Qigong were fully exhaled. So there is a yin and yang to it. I don't know what that is. Uh, do whichever one feels, feels correct. <clears throat> Let's continue uh, turning, turning around the center. So keep your head top up. Imagine how many here know what a centrifuge is. They use it either for, in, for chemi in chemistry to separate uh, materials. They use it in medical applications to separate plasma from the blood. So imagine your arms are like test tubes and your spine is like the central axis of the centrifuge. Feel as if your hands are getting full. As if the blood, just by turning, pulled all the way out to the end of the fingertips. Maybe it feels like the pads on your hands swelling, the knuckles. Keep the center line stable and turn as much as you can. So. Let everything relax, come back to the center. I can do, uh, right now, my because of the lighting in here and the way it's, uh, the camera kind of blows out whites and, and it uh, burns in the darks. This, this, you can't see this, but if I, I can just turn my arms this way. But what I want you to do is see if you can completely let your arms go. And just as if you're turning the center line, all the way to where my shoulder is in line with the camera. The hips, they're going to have to turn a little bit. If you start to feel tension on the outside and bottom of your knee down here, you want to allow that foot to relax a little bit. But, but generally, we want the hips facing forward this way. And, yeah, turning around the waist. Don't just let your arms, like uh, the body, this body is about the proportion of a box of cereal. Right, this rectangular shape. We can use a deck of playing cards, but it's Saturday morning. We should be watching cartoons, eating cereal. So, this is it, using this square. Don't just turn your arms around that rectangle like this. Instead, turn the whole box. Keep the center line straight. And this is the same thing for Tai Chi as well. Uh, if you take a break for a second, do some breathing. When we, if we brush knee and press. I don't just want to use my arm. There's no power here. It's only as powerful as my arm is. Whereas if I use my torso, coming from my feet through my torso and turning this whole shape, then we have some power. This is what if you, for uh, people here like martial arts, if you watch boxing, Western boxing. Western boxing is uh, sort of antithetical to Kung Fu because they have a corner. The whole idea for Kung Fu is to not get into a corner, whereas boxing, they have four corners in a ring. It's just nothing but corners because you want to get the other guy into the corner and beat him. So uh, with boxing, when you see people boxing, they're not just boxing like this. There's no power. That's what people on the street that don't know what they're doing, slap fighting, using just their arm. But when we're talking about boxing, they're pushing through the leg and it's coming through the torso and ending at the arm. This is what Tai Chi, what we're trying to put into the Tai Chi form, but we're hiding it. We don't have to show the, the fist, the punching. We can do the same movement, boxer's movement. We can practice 10,000 times without any additional wear and tear on the body and uh, achieve all of the other things as well. Let's continue to stretch. Uh, Push your tailbone back and away. Relax your spine, your shoulders, your neck, your head top. Let everything relax with gravity. Remember to breathe while you're upside down. It's a different perspective if you, if you uh, open your eyes while you're this way. And then when you're ready, grip, the, grip your feet. And then use your abs. Lock yourself to the ground, inflating 
taking as much air as you can. And then relax. And then let's take a second here. Uh, how many can feel? I can see it. Everybody's camera, your face looks red. Uh, that's good. It means the, the blood is moving. And that's what we're trying to do is uh, shake the bottle just a little tiny bit. So again, grip the ground. Push the tailbone back and away. Relax your spine. Let gravity pull on your skull. Let gravity open your neck for you. Let your shoulders relax. And they'll go into the right place. Remember to breathe. The long breathing will help you relax. And then when you're ready, activate the lower body. This is important when, when you're teaching this because people may have issues. Inflate all the way up and then relax. So when you it's like a teacher training note. When you're, when you're teaching, if you have people do this kind of bending, uh, the same way we... We feel the blood rush. You can even see on my camera, my, my face is red. Uh, if the people not activating putting chi at the bottom, they can have a, a energy going up to the top. So this is sort of like a, a generic uh, reversal for vertigo when uh, people get lightheaded, maybe maybe have, have some fainting issue, is the, is the opposite. Have them do a squat, grip the ground, Use the legs, right? Activate the root. Very simple. Sometimes acupuncture, qigong theory is very, very simple. There's too much energy up here. Move it back down here, right? Uh, if it's a little kid, maybe you can swing them from the arms. The same way we feel blood go to the end of the fingertips this way, in the centrifuge. How do we get the qi back down to the bottom? When the person is in control, we can have them grip their feet, activate their lower legs, uh, all of these heavy muscles here on the legs and the bottom to bring the energy back down to root. Uh, where were we? All right, let's uh, bring the feet back together. Take your hands, get them nice and warm. And so rubbing them together, do the breathing, and then rub that onto your knees. So transfer the heat that you just generated and you can add to more to it by rubbing it. Feel the soft tissue. Don't worry about the bone. And then while you're doing this, grip your toes and see how the dynamic of your kneecap changes. Keep rubbing and keep holding the grip in your toes. Remember to breathe. And then change, relax your toes and keep rubbing, use pressure. And you see how the tendons around your kneecaps change. Take a deep breath when you stand up. <clears throat> and remember that sensation around the kneecaps, what happens when you grip your toes. Uh, I have had probably more people come through classes than not that have knee issues. I have knee injury, I have knee injury. Everybody has knee injury. The way to fix it is by gripping the toes. Even when somebody has long-term grinding away at the cartilage, that kind of stuff, it seems weird. Gripping the toes seems like it would pull those two bones together. But instead, by activating those two bones, the, those, the toes, it actually sets them in the correct place. So, uh, and for ourselves, when you feel like you have some, oh man, my, my knee, you can activate the toes and it will strengthen that part of the kneecap. Let's do a little bit of turning to just turn some circles with the foot. Change direction, just do something the other way. And then the same on the other side. Grip the ground, practice your balance, turn some circles. Try some the other way. And come back to the center. Uh, remember, one of the goals for this as, a, as an energy practice is to get power to the fingertips, power to the toes, uh, to make the, the power go all the way to the end of the line. So we're going to practice a balance exercise we've done. I think we've done it. I'm certain we've done it in this class before. Is by making this triangle, it's 
pressing the foot forward out to the side and to the back. And when we do those, I want you to, on this one, holding the balance just a little bit longer, try to keep the foot flat. Let me make sure it's on the camera. And like you're pressing the gas or brake. And then the same thing on the side when you reach laterally. Activate the toe and the heel. And then the same thing in the back when you get to the back. This is a tricky one. Is as if you're flapping your foot. The goal, what I'm trying to do is combine two exercises. We have a balance exercise, which is the triangle here. And then another one, which is like this. If you put your foot forward, and like you're using your toes, try not to use your ankle. Like you're reaching your toes forward. You should feel some stretch on the top of your foot. And the back of your ankle can relax. We want to use this like an energy pump to get chi down to the ends of the toes. <clears throat> and so again, here, I can leave the end of my foot relaxed and just use my ankle, right? Like a pivot here. But what I want you to do, instead of turning at the ankle joint here, I want you to use your toes. So like you feel like you're extending and pressing. It may feel like they open, splay a little bit as well. Grip your standing foot, breathe naturally. So that feeling of pumping energy now, let's go back to the center. Let your feet touch. Start with one side or the other. It doesn't really matter. Shoot the foot forward. Keep it flat. And then press and you have to have a little bit of space off the ground. Like you're trying to push your toes through the end of your shoe. Remember to breathe. And then push it 90 degrees. Uh, this is we're trying to keep the balance the whole time. Don't let your hip on this side shift out. And the same thing as if there's a brake pedal over here. And we're activating that. And then push it to the back. Same thing. This one, the movement is smaller. Breathe deep. Feel the stretch. Come back to the center. If it's too easy, you can sink the standing leg and push this foot further to the side and to the back, right? Otherwise, to make it easier for yourself, stand a little bit more upright. You won't be able to push the foot as far. So go with what you feel comfortable, with the right space. Try not to set that foot down during all three of the. And then on your own, remember to breathe. Come back to the center. So this is a, this is a feeling that we want to try to keep when we're doing uh, Tai Chi is power to the extents. So let's start with the feet shoulder width wide and then let your shoulders relax. Let your hips sink as if you're going to sit right on the edge. There's a like a, a bench, like some platform, and you're just sitting just the very, very edge of it. And we mentioned earlier as if your torso has the proportion of a deck of playing cards or box of cereal. Feel that squareness. So that your shoulders sitting level, your hips also sitting level. And then also, if you see here, it's straight from here to here and here to here. We can change that. So, so if I keep my torso straight, I can sink back further. And I, if I sink back further, I still want to keep that straight. I need, I'm using this as a support, but... If my legs were strong enough, I could sit all the way back and keep this vertical. And that's the kind of leg strength we're looking to develop when we practice Tai Chi. Uh, and again, you can get out of your practice whatever you like to. If you like to just have a walk in the park, that's fine. Some people, uh, Mark, for instance, very serious martial artist, 
practicing uh, for many years, many, many hours. Uh, for Tai Chi, we can make this type of practice where we cultivate this leg strength. The way to do it is with the X stepping. So from the center, practice, grip the ground, activate your leg, all four sides of your leg. Come back to the center, keep the hips level, grip the ground. Don't shift, don't let your shoulders change. Keep power going to the head top. Activate your toes. You can practice the same type of thing when we do the form. So the X-stepping is like an exercise and we can use it to connect different ideas. Let's do the Tai Chi form with all of the things that we have talked about today. Uh, the breathing, power, going to the extents, the head, top, tailbone, uh, fingertips. And uh, before, well, before we do this, anyone have thoughts, questions, comments, ideas? By the way, the note that we had just talked about if you do, you can unmute yourself and ask as uh, freely as you like. Uh, the note that we had just talked about with this kind of leg strength, you don't have to practice Tai Chi this way, and you don't, your students don't have to when you teach. Uh, you can practice any way that you like. Even standing very upright, there's a benefit to practice. If I make my, width, my feet, when I say shoulder width wide, where the, the outsides of the feet, you see how narrow they are. I can do Tai Chi at that distance when I step. It's still a square, it's just a much smaller square. In fact, I had a, many years ago, 10 years ago, I had a motorcycle accident and uh, had some surgeries and stuff on my leg. You can't practice, right? It's broken, there's no way. So in the beginning, you have to practice. In fact, maybe because it hurts, you practice unbalanced, right? Because you have to protect that and you're doing something, but then later, after some time, you can strengthen the legs. So the, the level that you get out of it is the level that you put into it. And you can use the Tai Chi form for anything. Uh, let's, while, we, while we talk, let's actually do something. Take a square step and line up your hips to the square and your shoulders as well. And then imagine your hands are connected as if there's a board or a panel and you have some tape or Velcro, something that connects the hands to the panel itself, right? There may, you can imagine a, another panel that goes and you put your hands between. So that, like a mime, imagine wherever one hand goes, the other one has to go as well. So imagine your hands are glued to a board, stuck to a board. And we practice pushing. Like a wave machine, how many have seen the mechanics of a wave machine? It's a hydraulic uh, it's hydraulic shock that's connected to a, a plane that pushes the water and makes the wave. The benefit for Tai Chi, we live in a culture where we don't have to use Kung Fu to defend ourselves, not very often. And so the real benefit for the Tai Chi is when you're working in the kitchen. Everybody here goes to the kitchen. Everybody here opens the fridge to see what's inside for the snack. Every time you open the fridge, you're using your shoulder. You're using your back and your legs and your head and your neck. You might as well get into the process of doing it correctly so that you don't have issues. And <clears throat> the real value of Tai Chi, when you walk out to the street, when you go into the garage, when you're waiting, at the bank, when you're picking something up from the grocery store, from the Amazon delivery. Everybody gets an Amazon delivery. So using the body, it may seem uh, pedantic to say, well, when I'm walking, see that? I don't know if you can see it on my camera. It's off just a bit. That's a correct. 
So this off here is incorrect and it's straight and it's correct. It doesn't seem like a big deal and maybe it's not. Perhaps our, our bodies can, grow, can, can uh, get used to that. But if we like to practice well into our old age, when you see uh, oftentimes yogis, they're doing yoga, they can practice yoga for a long time. If you look to, to our teachers, right? Master Su uh, in her 70s, Wang Sahai in his 70s, still able to do better Kung Fu than us. It's because they fixed this little two degree, five degree error in their foot. And then 50 years, 70 years later, the body's still working. So uh, the Tai Chi form, not that important. It's good to know. It's good to practice. If you can practice it, I recommend to, <clears throat> to learn it because it will open uh, many, many things. But we can practice for beginners, Master Yun only teaching Tai Chi 8 form, 8 different postures on both sides, so it's like 16 postures, something like that. Anyway, the real power from Tai Chi is not coming from the Kung Fu martial art. That's all there. But if we have strong legs <clears throat> and we can pick up lots of groceries or whatever we need to do without injuring ourselves, we said starting by doing a lot of breathing, taking a lot of chi, before you do the activity, if you like gardening, if you like surfing, golfing, uh, any kind of exercise, take in tons of energy first, just like you go on a road trip, you can fill up the car with gas or electricity the same way with the body. Let's do Tai Chi. Before we do questions, thoughts, comments, ideas, <clears throat> let's do first and second section and then see what happens after that. Find a place to start. Push your head top up. Your body is only one piece. Think of it like a bamboo or a tree from the roots all the way up to the top. And then imagine, without talking about any of the points, that you can let all of the muscles and tendons relax. In place, extend your head top, connect the tongue to the upper palate, make sure you have at least a neutral expression. TC would say half smiles. We're opening to the side. Sinking and floating, expanding and relaxing. This is Tai Chi Chi Chi. Breathing. This is grass, the sparrow's tail. Right. Ward off. Left. Breathing. Grass, the sparrow's tail. Left. Square step. Ward off. Right. Breathing deep. This is roll back. Turning, press to the north. Push as if the hands are connected. Shift back, look left. Breathing deep, right, double press. Horizontal split. The owl show is hook. Still facing west, my feet are square. This is single whip. Turning to the north. Grip the ground. I'm going to turn a little bit sideways so you can see. This is T saw. Step square. Brush across. Roll up. Standing on my right foot, I'm turning 90 degrees. For crane, opening the wings. Turn the waist, turn the wing. Press to the center. Square step back. Crane, two. to the center, holding the moon in the chest, avoid, make contact, advance, Bon Lan Shui, we avoid, make contact, advance, Lan, avoid, make contact, 
advance, punch, <coughs> roof on, press, press, breathe, align your feet, align your neck, you turn the tiger to mountain, and the right side to the left, T-step, Kobu, palm press, due south, take a deep breath to roll back. Press. Push. Look left. Lance right. Double push. Horizontal we're facing east. This is hook. Turn back to look at the moon. Right hand crosses over, left hand comes through the center of the circle, right to the center. Turn, press, repulse the monkey number two. Grip the foot, breathing deep. Repulse the monkey number Opening on the right side, share faith. Cow. Diagonal flying. Needle at the bottom of the sea. Stepping due west, San Juan Bay. Turn 180. Block. Punch. Line. Shui. Keep your head top up. Debu Hua. Shang Bu Li. Join the palms. Press. Push. Look left, glance right, double press, horizontal, split hands, hook, side whip, facing north. This is cloud hands in the second section. Turning right, press right. Step, press to the left. Right, left. The Al show. We're going to turn 90 degrees to the west for single whip. And this is Gal Tenma. Pat the big horse on the back. And Gal Tenma number two. Pull the mane, reach over the back. Turning, scoop. Brush knee, C step, press to the center. Brush knee, C step. Palm press, breathing deep. Brush knee, straight step, punch. Turning, 180. Block, punch, kick. Step, lock, sway. This is called Zou Hua, left deflect. And the movement goes all the way through this kick. 
big roll back. Keep your back and your neck straight. On the other side, a big roll back. Try to keep everything lined up. Scoop the moon from the ocean. Two winds going into the ears. Step back. Pull on the left side. Kick on the left side. Turning. One. Two. Three. Pull right side. Kick right side. Block. Punch. Kick. Breathe deep. Open. Focus the power. Roof on. Subi. Turning north. This is return tiger to mountain. We're closing the form. So there's roll the fist to block. Unroll the arms to punch right and left. Use that momentum to bring the left side back to the right. And take a deep breath. Relax. <clears throat> How do you feel? Let's actually, after doing that, let's uh, let's breathe. So taking a bunch of, you can feel the outer air is cooler. At your own pace, use your whole body to breathe. So while you're inhaling, use the the mind trick to relax the tendons and the muscles. Anyone have questions, thoughts, comments, ideas? If not, we have, a, we have a few minutes left. It looks like we have about seven minutes left. Let's do the third section uh, up until the four corners, the second movement after four corners. So we'll start from the center to sort of where we, where we ended the, the second section. And we can start in Tai Chi harmony. <clears throat> We're going to open shoulder width wide. We can do the commencement, right, Tai Chi Chi Chi. We're going to begin with return tiger to mountain. So bringing the feet together, we're turning right into the third section, palm press to the south. And then the standard eight movements that repeat, roll back, press, push, look left, glance right. Double push. Horizontal split. Now we're facing east. And so from here we have hook and a side whip. Straighten out the corners of the playing cards. Grip the ground. Step square. This is wild horse parting its main one. And then gripping the ground. Left side comes up through the center of the circle, expanding, almost like ward off. Wild horse number two. Breathing deep, right side, expands forward. And then we return back to roll back. So breathing again, turn 90. Activate your feet. And when you do that, you should be able to relax your legs and back more. Push. Look left. Glance right. Double push. And we're facing north. Hook. We're going to stay facing north. Side whip. And this is 
four corners, the first corner. Scoop, step, and then pressing northeast. Looking over the shoulder, close one foot, open the right side, scoop, press to the corner, northwest. Breathing with close, avoid turning to the southwest. Make contact, rolling the palms, advance. Looking to the southeast, we close one foot, step back, open, scoop, press, left grasp the sparrow's tail, right press vertically downwards onto the elbow, and then left press horizontally forward. Breathing deep. After the push, bring your feet together. Take a deep breath, relax. By the way, this, uh, I don't know how many saw it. We can focus on something a little more relaxed. For the four corners, imagine if you just bring your hands up in front of you this way. And so when you bring them up, you turn them so that they face down and then they face forward. So this has a unique hand trick just like the cloud hands goes in and then up and then down and then out so we make this kind of coil right it's facing inwards it's facing up it's facing down and then it's facing out right so this coil is the cloud hands well uh four corners has something similar first we're lifting up and then we're pressing and then we're pressing out. This is like a loop. So one of the ways my teacher would say is imagine you have some darts in your hand. If you ever go to the, the uh, bar or the sports place, sports bar, and they have the darts you throw at the wall. If you hold those darts in your hands just like this, and you're gonna, you want to throw them, but instead of just throwing them straight like this, we're going to make the momentum go up first and then coil forward. So breathing as if this is going up and then turning and shooting forward. But now we don't just want to use the wrist. We could, right? If they're really if it's really lightweight, we want to use the whole body. So if I'm if north is that way and east and west are that way and I'm going from hook and whip, the first one is I'm scooping up, right? I want to move the opponent's weapons out of the way. Whatever they have I'm going to softly connect underneath them to move them up. And then once I've got them in motion, I'm going to use this other arm like a paint roller. Here's where we see the reason I'm talking about this is we've been mentioning Chauncey as this rolling of the forearm. Is once I've got the weight up and out of the way, I can use this thing, right? Even if this is my opponent's main structure, I want to use this force to give, you see there's a little bit of, movement back that way. And I want to use this arm like a roller. I don't know if you can see my hand turning, but you can use it like a, a pry bar to get underneath there, activating all of this. And it's difficult to squirm away from because it's a wheel. You're rolling up with the wheel. And then while that's happening, the other hand does whatever it needs to do, whether it's a push, whether it's a strike, whether we throw the dart, whatever it is. So let's look again. If we go from hook, whip, I'm using both hands to lift. I'm putting my right foot forward. Then once I transfer onto that foot, my left hand is supporting the structure through my right foot. And when I step, I have this. <clears throat> In the beginning, you can think of this as horizontal and vertical. But later, this shape can change. It can actually turn into quite a number of different things. You can have cover and a punch, right? You can use just a knuckle, something. So let's go from the beginning. We have hook, whip, scoop, scoop. And then this hand is the supporting hand, press. Let's use a non-martial arts example. The one that I, I like to use is car hood. And imagine a heavy car hood, not, uh, you know, if you have a, uh, I drive a Japanese car, so the hood is not like if we have a, a Buick or a Plymouth, right? Like 
one of these, these style cars that has a giant metal hood. And let's say there's something valuable you left working when you're working on the engine. You left your expensive sunglasses sitting on top of the carburetor. So from the hook and whip, we want to try to get if, if the hood is going to fall down to crush your, your expensive sunglasses, you want to first try to catch it. If you can get both hands under the hood, that's great. And then once you do, you're supporting, using your power to drive up under the hood to support this way. And then you can reach in to take your, your glasses. And when you close, let everything crumble, right? We simply get our equipment out of the way and turn to the next corner. <clears throat> and the same thing, there's another... <laughs> We can think of the hood like the opponent's attacks this way, or if they're coming across here, right? We want to just, this is a hinge, flip that hinge out of the way, and once that hinge is flipped out of the way, step into press, right? So this is what's happening. We're lifting. And then, like a, uh, on a washing machine, they have this kind of twirling action. You see my hands, they're not just staying in place here. The lift comes up backwards and in. So think of like the ocean has another, the same kind of thing. Sometimes the wave comes in and there's so much force when it hits the sand or the rocks that it, it sends water back out. So we want the same kind of organic movement. The power goes up and there's still enough power to complete the strike. So we allow gravity to add to that power and right as it's going out, turn the waist to send additional power after it. So, scoop, we're lifting the heavy thing out of the way. And then once it has that upward momentum, we don't need that much. We can just brace it just a little bit. And the other hand, by driving force through the leg in the center, pushes to this direction. So breathing, scoop, scoop, turn, press. <clears throat> That's it. That's good. We're actually... Uh, it's actually a couple minutes after, and, and while we started late, here we are finishing late. Does anyone have questions, thoughts, comments, ideas? Let's actually uh, close the same way we started, uh, by taking in energy, breathing deep. You don't have to worry as much about the stretch, just refilling the tank. The same way we said before you go on your journey, before you go on your adventure, you load up vehicle with all the things that you'll need and then when you get back you like to put it away put the the vehicle and the toys away you know, clean and filled with gas you know you put the car back in the garage with gas so breathing the same way is it common sense is it a tai chi idea go at your own pace inflating And see if you can practice the exercise somewhere in the middle of one of your breaths and while taking in the chi of the mind trick of letting the muscles and tendons relax on their own without having to do a full round of yoga, a full stretch. No need to do Pilates or anything else. Tai Chi can do the thing. By the way, for people who are coming into summertime and even though we're in a, uh, we have a, a pandemic, maybe happening, nobody knows anymore. Uh, everybody's concerned with how we look. So you can do this kind of breathing. To, it's, it's very counterintuitive. It seems almost backwards to uh, if we want to lose weight and get in shape. So keep working, keep breathing. I'm going to do something different while you're doing this kind of breathing. So how many here when children play have a sandbox, playing in the sandbox? And you know, uh, sand, or, or if you, mine doesn't go back that far, hourglass, the last time you've seen an hourglass. And the sand, when you look from the top, goes into that hole in the center. This is the same way we can lose weight by activating the stomach. And think of your dante and the navel as the hole in the, the center of the hourglass. So when you breathe in, or inhale, exhale, you can find the pattern. We're activating this stomach. And so allowing the sand to fall into the center by activating the central pump on the Dantian, 
Well, actually, poll, if we're talking about uh, whether it's uh, weight, fat, chemicals, if you like to drink a lot of sodas or uh, take in whatever kind of chemicals you like to take in, all of that goes into the hole, into the center, right? So the sand coming from different places, it starts here, right? And we may not see the progress here first the same way if, the, if you look in the hourglass, uh, we don't see the shape of the funnel changing while the sand is going through it. But after some time, you'll see some progress. So breathing is the real powerhouse of the Tai Chi. You can change your, your metabolism. You can change your weight, especially body fat, simply by burning it. And the secret, the billion-dollar secret to burning belly fat is literally moving the belly like this, right, by breathing. Buddha breathing Taoist breathing, you don't have to do crunches, you don't have to do turns, you can master your own metabolism with breathing. I'll leave you with a story before we go. Uh, Chen Men Chang was a Chinese guy living in New York City, and in his books, uh, one of his students claims that he would, he would go to parties and challenge people to eating competitions, <laughs> and uh, that he would eat people under the table. There was a little Chinese guy. and uh, No one knew how he was doing it, but the concept is ramping up your metabolism to be able to ingest. He would do the same thing. The rumor was, he's not written, the rumors he would do the same thing, drinking as well, because that's a metabolism feature. So more air, more gas, more power. Bring your feet together in the center. Bring your hands together. Leave your eyes somewhere between open and closed and put your consciousness into the Dantian, into the center. Take a second, breathing deep, to smile to yourself. Internally looking at yourself, smiling at yourself. Take a second to give thanks to yourself for yourself. <clears throat> One last deep breath. Call, email, text with questions. Have a great weekend. And uh, yeah, I think we'll do class tomorrow night. And uh, I may have a project coming up, so we may uh, sort of change things. I think Sunday night we were talking about doing uh, stick. Saturday morning will always be here. Uh, Wednesday evening may get pushed back later. Let's, uh, let's see what happens in the future. So have a great weekend.